Today I'm in the northern county that's home to Castle Howard. This resplendent Baroque-style masterpiece was first designed back in 1699 by a playwright, no less, who had no previous experience of architecture. Nowadays, it's better known around the world for the part it's played in the TV and film adaptations of Evelyn Waugh's classic novel, Brideshead Revisited. So join me as I soak up the sumptuous decadence and we escape to the country. In today's show, I'll be helping a couple dreaming of the good life make their move to the country. And it's not long before we impress. This is just astounding. Isn't Another it? fabulous room. I'll be showing them some stunning properties to whet their appetite. I, I just want to get my apron on there and start cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the mystery house, which might just broaden their horizons. I'm in North Yorkshire, England's largest rural county, and home to some of the finest stately homes in Britain. We're a better place to start than at one of the most well-known, Castle Howard. Big certainly means beautiful in this part of the country. North Yorkshire is the largest of the four counties that make up the entire Yorkshire region. Much of the rugged landscape falls within the county's two national parks, the North York Moors and the Yorkshire Dales. With 680 square miles of dramatic scenery to enjoy, it's no wonder the Dales attracts 9 million visitors a year. Besides tourism, the land is also home to a large and thriving farming community. Typically, the housing stock, from stately home to terraced cottage, is built from local Yorkshire stone, giving the county its rich architectural heritage. With such beautiful properties and landscape, it's easy to see why North Yorkshire is an attractive option for those wishing to escape to the country. Detached properties in North Yorkshire cost 4% less than the national average, at just over £226,000. And the area's commutable proximity to both York and Leeds make it highly desirable. I think perhaps because of both of these reasons, the property market is thriving around here. You know, recently Canvas estate agents say they are selling up to 14 houses a week since January, and that's pretty impressive in the current climate. It also means we've got to be quick off the mark for today's house hunters. But before we get started on our property search, take a look at this selection of properties in North Yorkshire to get you in the mood. For £875,000, this Grade 2 listed six-bedroomed country house in Normanby is bang up to date with its large family kitchen and tastefully decorated reception rooms. From its hilltop location, you can survey the property's 15 acres. This four-bedroomed house near Markington could be yours for £625,000. As well as those late 1920s well-proportioned formal rooms, there's a well-planned modern kitchen with breakfast bar. Outside, a stream runs through the mature gardens. For a waterside retreat, this three-bedroomed house in Ripon could be a catch at £350,000. Downstairs offers light, spacious reception rooms and a modern kitchen. And upstairs doesn't disappoint, with views overlooking the lock. Well, with such desirable homes on the market, the signs are good for today's house hunters. So let's meet them. Paula, a dog breeder, and Philip, an operations manager, currently live in Kings Langley in Hertfordshire. Paula bought the house in the mid-90s for £130,000, and having lived together for a year now, they want a dramatic change of lifestyle. We're currently living in a three-bedroom, semi-detached property, a large garden, smallish kitchen. This house isn't particularly ideal for us now because it doesn't fulfil our future needs. So what dreams are they looking to realise with a move to the country? The lifestyle that we dream of is going to be completely different to what we're used to, isn't oh, it, or what much. we've lived. No. Um, it's going to be living off the land, it's keeping livestock, um, growing your own vegetables. Paul is no stranger to keeping animals. As a former Crufts champion, her six Afghan hounds are a major factor in their move. One of my great passions is my dogs and uh, I can't wait to move to the country so we can take them for these great long walks all through the countryside and the hills. We're all going to benefit from it, you know, and it's just can't wait to do it. Dogs will be a key part of this move and a money spinner if she can set up the kennel business she dreams of. But what's the appeal of Yorkshire? Partly because I fell in love with the place 
um, years ago. I mean, I'm talking when I was probably 15, 16 years old, and it would just fulfil our dreams. And they've got a definite idea of what they want from their ideal property. Key features are that real sort of cottagey, oldie worldy cottagey type Cozy. property. Low ceilings, beams, Inglenook fireplace. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, nice views, you know, over sort of rolling hillsides. The land, obviously, is the most important thing. And uh, we want a really nice big kitchen, don't we? Because <clears throat> I love cooking, but you just need more space in the kitchen. An old farmhouse oh, type kitchen. We all log fires and, and that in the <sighs> new house. So. <laughs> and Paula has her own room requirements. One of the most important things to me is to have a nice big utility room like we have here, um, because this is where my dogs tend to live. Um, and then that just helps me keep them a little bit separate from the house as I can keep the house clean. Not quite so much housework as if they're running around in, in the house. So this is quite an important aspect for me. So are they ready for such a huge challenge? We're halfway through our lives, essentially. If we don't do it now, we will never, ever do it. No. Before they can move to the country, Philip and Paula need to find out how much money they have to play with. So we've arranged for Paula's house to be valued. This is a really well-presented, spacious family home in this very popular location, and I value this property at £395,000. I was quite pleased with the estate agent's valuation today because uh, with the current situation with everything, I thought the house prices would... Um, have come down quite a bit, so actually I was quite pleased with that. Mm. And what's the budget for their next property? Our budget for this move is £550,000. Mm, so our dog lovers are looking for a characterful three-bedroom property with original features and a large kitchen. But I think the key to this move is really going to be the outside space and more particularly how much they need. Well, they need at least one to six acres so they can both fulfil this dream of self-sufficiency. And of course, there's Paula's dogs to consider. They've got a good healthy budget of £550,000, but depending on how much land they actually need, they may have to compromise on that house. Paula and Philip want to find a country home with land, so our search will radiate out from the town of Ripon close to the Yorkshire Dales. In today's show, I'll be taking them on a tour of three great properties, but as ever, I won't be revealing the prices straight away. The last of the three will be the Mystery House, which could always offer up some blue sky thinking. Hello, Hiya. Phil, Paula. Hi. Welcome to scenic Yorkshire and beautifully sounding as well. Uh, the sheep bleating and the birds sweeting. Is this what this move is all about for you, getting back to nature? Absolutely. The open space um, brings back so many childhood memories for me, so looking that, forward to it. And that's why you've chosen North Yorkshire as yeah. a county? Yeah, very much so. A childhood memory. Yeah. Mm. So how important is it to you to have land with the house? Very important because um, I know it sounds a bit cliche-ish, but you know we want to we want to own our own livestock, live off the land, grow our own vegetables. That's a huge lifestyle change. You're going to go from nine to five to working with animals. Absolutely. You ready for that? Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> of course, it's not so much of a change for you. You work with dogs in the kennels at the moment. I do. Yeah, I've done that for about thirty years now. So um, you know, to move here, have some space, and uh, set up a small holding and uh, kennels, boarding kennels alongside. So we need to find you not just a property, but enough land for the livestock and a kennel business. How much money do we have to play with? The budget that we've got is 550000 No, that's not bad at all. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> North Yorkshire is pretty popular. It's got some wonderful scenery. Mm. But for 550 I'm sure we're going to find you some wonderful properties, including, of course, the Mystery House, which will shake things up a bit. Sure. Lots to do, a lot of ground to cover. Should yep. we hit the road? Let's. Yeah, let's okay. do it. With a budget of £550,000, Paula and Philip want a detached property which has a large country kitchen, reception rooms with character features, a large utility room for Paula's dogs and up to six acres of land, enough for a small holding and Paula's kennels. This is a big change, really. Oh, it's massive. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, I think you have to... You know, we're at that stage in our lives where, um, you know, if we don't do it now, we're never going to do it. So uh, just embrace it is my motto. So how much do you know about what it's like to have a small holding, raise pigs, um, sheep? Pretty nothing. nothing. Pretty much. <laughs> no, absolutely. Are you scared? No, not really. It is. I, I find I find it quite scary. Excitably scary. I'm not sure they know what they're letting themselves in for. 
We'll start our house search in the quiet village of Galfi, just five miles from Ripon. If they're after a few local amenities, there's the pretty neighbouring village of Kirby Malzard, built from the lovely Yorkshire limestone. It sits in the Nidderdale area of outstanding beauty, offering perfect dog walking territory for our couple. On the edge of the village, we find our first property, two limestone weavers' cottages knocked into one. So this place is, I think, ideal for you. Okay. Great village community. Yeah. There's a, a local village hall where they have quiz nights. And you can get as involved as you want to. Mm. But I suppose it's more important that you like the property. Come this way and have a look at this. Wow. Looks lovely. Is this what you pictured? Looks good. Yeah, it looks mm. really nice. Let's get in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. You like it that much? Yeah, yeah it looks nice. Let's go. Well, it's a great first impression, which I'm sure will continue inside. Oh. That is the reaction I thought I would get. Big wow. smile. Well, that's nice, isn't it? First thoughts? Mm. Love these little bits, lovely. <laughs> isn't it great? I mean, this is just the entrance <laughs> hallway. Yeah. It's a generous size, isn't it, for a little cottage? Isn't it just? That's because it used to be the kitchen. Did it? It's got the beams, it's got the character. It's, it's lovely. Want to see it all? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so you need to see a bit more because, of course, if this isn't the kitchen, then what is? Mm. Come this way. OK. We come down here, we've got some lovely beams, but this is really what it's all about. Oh, <gasps> look. Wow, that's that impressive. was a big, Cooking big soil. Deep intake of breath there. Yeah, that's impressive, isn't it? Flagstones yeah. again on the floor. It's the range cooker for me as well that does it. And that lovely yeah, view from lovely. the kitchen window. So what do you think? This is fantastic. Isn't it? This size is, is perfect for us. No more complaining. No, not enough work surface. As if. <laughs> <laughs> kitchen, thumbs up? Definitely. Yep. Ten out of ten. Anyway. Ten out of ten? <laughs> and we haven't even shown cool? you the other side yet. Let's head over and see the other cottage. <laughs> this property has all the character of a cottage, but is twice the size. On our way through to the other side, we'll take a peek at the dining room. So not only do you have dining space in the kitchen, you've got a dining room here. What do you think? Lovely. Oh, it's lovely. It is really nice. It's just... Well, it's so Warm. welcoming. Warm. A great room for entertaining in, mm. but you've got another living room. OK. Come through here. Now, you've got the second front door, because obviously we're in the other cottage now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But look at this. Ah, oh, this is cosy. Isn't it cosy, yeah. It is everything you expect from a cottage. It is. It certainly is downstairs. Let's have a look at the upstairs. Sure. OK. okay. There's a fairly short staircase, but it comes up into this area. Oh, isn't this cute? Isn't it lovely? Blimey, that's unexpected, isn't it? It used to be a bathroom. Does it? That little window. <laughs> well spotted, isn't yeah. It? We'll be heading in there in a second. Now, down that corridor, yeah. you've got three good-sized bedrooms. Upstairs is deceptively spacious. There are two good-sized light rooms and one with extra loft space, ideal for storage or as a small office. Next to the single room, there's a small but adequate bathroom. Back on this side, we'll have a look at what could be their bedroom. <laughs> this oh. is gorgeous, isn't it? So this could be uh, your master bedroom. It's fantastic. Yeah. Very, More very big. Just don't know what to say. <laughs> and I think they're good. I think they're good. They yes. are. Yeah. Oh, it's just. Oh, it's gorgeous. And then again, these deep windows, and they've created oh, a window seat. window there. seat, I love that. Oh, yeah. it's gorgeous. There's only one thing that could make this room even better. Bathroom. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come this way. <laughs> oh, dressing room. <laughs> you didn't even notice Hello. there was no storage space, no. did you? <laughs> no. Well, you've got all of this. I don't know whether I'd like to keep this like this. Maybe we could convert one of the other bedrooms yeah. into a dressing room. Yeah. But it all leads through to this. <gasps> this is just astounding. Isn't Another it? fabulous room. It's pretty generous for an ensuite in a cottage. It? Yeah. Wonderful, isn't and it? And nothing to do. Nothing to do. You could <laughs> move straight, straight, straight in, in to the house, mm. but we've still got to look at the outside space. Good point. Oh, I hope yeah. that all lives up to uh, what the house has. Is it still very important? I mean, uh, if the house was be. perfect, would you compromise a bit on the land? I don't think we. Well, I'm not sure. We can I'm only sure. compromise a certain, a certain amount, amount to be able to do what we want to do, and there's, mm. there's no point in, in doing this without having the being able to do both. Mm. Then we need to go out and have a look. 
We'll go and see how much you get and what you can do with it. OK. Lovely. After you. OK. Time to scope the outdoors. Fingers crossed there's enough space for the dogs. Step back outside. Oh, it's such a gorgeous day, isn't it? It's it is, lovely. Isn't it? Come through into this lovely little lawned area. Yeah. The current owners do have planning permission to build a family room extension oh, right. here. OK. So my thoughts are perhaps that could be changed to a utility yeah, no, space. Yeah, that would, yeah, and that would, that would be absolutely perfect. Down here, we have the rest of what could be your land. OK. Ah. <laughs> is that a stream? Yes. <gasps> little added <laughs> extra for you. That's lovely, isn't it? Where's the boundary? Well, here? see that fence there? Yeah. yeah. Going all the way back, that chicken coop? Yeah. We've got about an acre in total. So okay. down to the fence here. OK. So space for chickens, I think you can fit a couple of pigs on here. Yeah. And I don't know, is it enough for your kennels? Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find a way. Yeah. But that all depends, of course, on whether you can afford it. Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, here we go. But yeah. Give me a figure. Come on, Paula. I think you've really pushed the boat out here and I think you must be really right on our budget. So I'd say about 550. I'll go 520. 520. This one goes to you, Phil. It's actually on the market at the moment for 525,000 pounds. Wow. Now what one do you nil. think of that? One nil. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's a good price, That's isn't good. it? That's good. It's under budget. <laughs> Bit of money left over to play with to mm. uh, build kennels. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Just gets better and better. It does. <laughs> I think you need to go and have a little exploration. Yeah. Have a look around, go back in the house. Okay. Start to see if it could really work for you, and I will find you both later. All right. Lovely. Okay. 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 Thank you. Later. See you in a bit. Back that way. Okay. Great start. 525. That is under their budget. They could certainly afford this property, but the question is how much land do they really need? Well, there's potentially enough to accommodate our couple's massive lifestyle change. There's space for Paula's kennel business, which she could set up in a residential area, provided she gets planning consent from Harrogate Borough Council. There's also room for Phil to kickstart his dream of self-sufficiency, with a few chickens and possibly a pig or two. So, at £525,000, these two cottages knocked into one make a lovely, spacious character property offering. There's a large country kitchen diner, Two reception rooms with lots of character appeal, four bedrooms with a master en suite, and one acre of land. This is lovely, this kitchen, isn't it? It's your dream kitchen. It is my dream kitchen. It's my favourite room by far, actually. I think oh, this is one of my favourite yeah, rooms. Yeah, I was going to say, this is probably your favourite, isn't it? I just love the ceiling, high pitch. This house. It's been absolutely beautiful. Um, I've fallen in love with it. Um, every room has been a surprise. Every room is full of character. The the house, the property in itself is absolutely fantastic. I think it ticks every single box for, for Paula and I. The only reservation I have is the land, um, in as much as is it enough land, really, to have, have kennels and livestock. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been making myself very comfortable in what could be your new home. Oh, <laughs> so much to think I've about, though. Oh, I know, mm, I know. And there's so much more to see, so don't get too comfortable yourselves. Mm, okay. Let's keep going. OK. Over the years, we've seen some houses that need a little bit of work. But imagine the upkeep involved in looking after this. Castle Howard in North Yorkshire is one of the most spectacular stately homes in England. It was built at the end of the 17th century by Sir John Vanborough, the playwright and architect for the third Earl of Carlisle, whose family have lived here ever since. Castle Howard is open to the public and attracts over 200,000 visitors a year. But the current owner, the Honourable Simon Howard, has agreed to give us a private tour of this splendid historical residence, the place that he calls home. Looking after a building like this is a lifetime's work, and restoration is something that the Howard family take very seriously. Back in the 1940s, a catastrophic fire swept through the building, and they're even now dealing with the consequences, although the main hall is still a truly breathtaking spectacle. 
wow. <laughs> we say wow a lot on this show about rooms, but I have never seen something so splendid. It's magnificent. It Absolutely. is wonderful, isn't it? I mean, it's Van Brugge's great masterpiece. Of course, he was a playwright, mm -hmm. so uh, stage designer, and that's what this is. Uh, it, it really is pure theatre, the drama in this room and, and the detail. Mm. Yeah, and it was fantastic. ravaged by a fire. And the, yes, well, the fire started over in that wing and ripped through all these rooms behind us and then took the dome out. What the dome crashed in, and you can actually still see on the floor where some of the oh, damage crikey. occurred. But uh, there's still smoke damage in here on the frescoes, and mm. all of them need uh, restoration at some mm. stage. And that's a job I'd love to do because mm. it would really bring this room alive. Sure. It's a real project that I've got. I hope I can do before I keel over. <laughs> <laughs> Restoring Baroque masterpieces is a costly business, but much of the work here has been paid for by film companies, keen to take advantage of such an exquisite location. Castle Howard has twice played host to Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Revisited, and the latest film version even left behind some architectural heritage of its own, although maybe not in materials that Vambra would have been that familiar with. Perspex. Right. MDF. Right. Wonderful stuff. But that's, you know, it's a film set. That's what this room is. And you do question, should we keep it? Should we get rid of it? What should we do with it? Well, at the moment, it makes sense to keep it as a bride's head set. Can we have a look at one of the rooms, then, that's been a restored to its original status? Yes. Okay. Let's move out. This, then, is uh, Lady Corder's room. It's been totally redone because it was derelict in here. A new fireplace. The mirror I bought in a... An antique shop in London, along with the two candelabra. So you really are involved in the details of restoring these rooms. Yeah. I mean, you haven't just handed it over to, to outside specialists. No, this is very much my wife and myself. I mean, my, this is really my wife's sort of choice of uh, fabric and wallpaper. Do you actually use this as a as a you know as a bedroom? Very much so. Yes, it's you one do. of our main guest bedrooms, and occasionally it is open for groups to see. Right, Crikey. but not to the general public. Not generally, partially because of the carpet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. How do you feel about future generations looking after this? I, I do hope that they'll be able to. I mean, mm. I think that is the biggest problem we face, mm. is whether actually families will be able to continue to live in these houses. What I'm so thrilled about is that certainly during my lifetime, I've seen this house resurrected from the dead. It's a mm. bit like the phoenix coming out of the actress, mm. literally. And what I think we've achieved is a tremendous amount, and it's really exciting that it's sort of vibrant and living. Castle Howard is an inspiring example of the passion and dedication that's needed to keep wonderful buildings like this alive and accessible for generations to come. As the sun sets over the Yorkshire Dales, the first day of our property hunt is at an end. Paula and Philip want to up sticks from Kings Langley in Hertfordshire and start a completely new life in North Yorkshire. With a budget of £550,000, they want a country cottage with land for Paula's kennel business or to realise Phil's dream of a small holding. So far, they've seen one house, but coming up, it's time to pause for thought. I can see some uh, chin stroking going <laughs> on here. <laughs> the man is thinking. <laughs> And in the mystery house, we serve up a kitchen for Philip that could be a ready-made way to earn a crust. I can't wait to see the rest of it, yeah? <laughs> It's the start of another gorgeous day here in idyllic North Yorkshire. But if Paula and Phil are going to get to enjoy this lovely countryside, they need to work out a way to pay for it. Our next property takes us 20 miles from Ripon to Leyburn in the heart of Wensleydale. It's a thriving market town with some impressive local architecture and is well served by its range of good independent shops. And there are spectacular views from the Shawl, a natural limestone outcrop just above the town. Our next house is built from the local limestone and could accommodate both their dreams of the kennel business and the small holding. We are looking at a barn conversion. Oh, right. Ah. <laughs> wow. What does that say to you? It looks good, actually. It looks really nice. It okay. used to be a cattle barn. First impressions? Good. Let's get in there. <laughs> yeah. Now. Let's go. Well, it's all smiles so far, which I hope will continue as we take a closer look. Right. Step inside. Oh, look. 
Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Well, this is the original cattle barn. Right. And it's a big, spacious room. Mm. It, it's very large, actually. But has it got enough character for you? With a little bit of work, mm. I think, certainly, yeah. Fantastic. Good start. Then come this way and okay. see how you feel about the next room. Hey, this is all right, isn't it? I thought it might be to your liking. Yeah. And you, of course, are the chef. So what do you think of this Apparently layout? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Uh, it it will probably need a bit of updating, obviously, but, hey, that's just our just, taste, isn't it? Yeah, it's it just changing to your way, taste. But, mm. Yeah. Good. Way. So, so far, this downstairs of this house is doing well. It is. Yeah, yeah. But there's more. Come okay. this way. On the far side of the kitchen, there's a small bathroom with walk-in shower, a handy utility room, a further light, bright bathroom and a single bedroom with office space. Now it's time to head upstairs. So up here, you do have a toilet, which means you don't have to run downstairs in the middle of the night. Oh, that's handy. Second bedroom. OK. And, of course, the master. Wow. Wow, and look at those look views. At the views. It's great, huh? Isn't it? Fab. Mikey. Looking out over the whole of Yorkshire, it feels like. I know, waking up to that every morning. But the view like that, the rest of it kind of pales into insignificance, mm. doesn't it? Mm. It's a nice comfy bed in here. There's clearly enough room for storage. Yeah. Mm. Another room that seems to be working for you. Inside yeah. of the house, we've done well. It's looking good. Absolutely. But the land, we mm. need to address that. Mm. Let's get outside and have a look. OK. Mm. Well, overall, they seem to like the house, so I hope the land outside will clinch it. Let's take a tour of the garden. There's the sun trap of a patio area, a small vegetable garden, and at the far end, there's even more space for growing your own with a second greenhouse. They've divided up quite nicely, haven't mm. they? Mm. So your own of the space to grow vegetables, be self-sufficient yeah. yeah. from that yeah, point no, of view. This is ideal for that, isn't yeah. it? No, so this bit's sorted. Space, yeah, yeah. Like that. The house is sorted. Yeah. What about the <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you out of your misery. How does four and a half acres sound to you? That'd be excellent. That is ample. Well, that could be yours, because the land stretches right the way from behind there all the way around <gasps> to the other side of the house. Blimey. Oh God. Blimey indeed. It's quite a lot for you to look <laughs> at. Let's go have a closer look. Yeah. As we walk up to the main field, there's a chance to take in the stunning views of the Dales. But all of this could be yours. And all of that. Oh, look at that. And all of that. Blimey. This plot, I think, represents your dream coming to life. Mm. It's getting quite exciting, actually, isn't it? Yeah. But the big question is, as ever, mm. how much would you be willing to pay to get this, to make your dream come true? The house itself is not hugely large. Land, a fair bit of it. I think we're still perhaps maybe slightly under budget on five, two, five. OK. I think that's over the top, actually. Four, seven, five. Four seven five. I'm afraid this one goes Ooh. to Phil. Good guess. Oh. This is on the market at a delightful four hundred and sixty-eight thousand pounds. Blimey! Wow. That so gives that gives you a fair change. chunk to do quite a lot with. I can see some uh, chin stroking going <laughs> on here. The man is thinking. <laughs> We're going to need to do some, some maths, obviously, in terms of what it's going to cost to build the kennels. There's clearly lots that's going around your yeah, head, lots definitely. of changes you want to make, and lots of land for you to investigate. Yeah, sure. So have a wander around we'll do. and start to put it all together. OK. Mm. All right, we'll catch up later on. Right. OK, we'll Thanks. do. Okay. Cheers. Four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Ha ha! <laughs> it's brilliant. It's a great price. It's a cracking property. This really allows them to make their dream. And I think it's making them a bit nervous. Let's see what they come up with. So, at £468,000, this barn conversion could be the answer to the house land conundrum. There's a large kitchen diner, spacious living room with countryside views, a utility room for Paula's dogs, and four and a half acres of land. Plenty of space for a small holding and the kennels. This property for me is a definite contender. And the reason I say that is that it's got so much potential. It brings together all of the elements that we were originally looking at. The large kitchen, um, the, the cottage style. OK, it's not quite there, but the fact that it's under budget just allows us that little bit more um, financial manoeuvring to actually realise our dream come true. 
the things I would change would be easily done. Um, the amount of land is just absolutely fantastic and would give us plenty to be able to do all that we wanted to do. So we would definitely think about this very, very seriously. Yeah. Phil and Paula have no experience of raising livestock, so we're going to give them a wake-up call when it comes to running a small holding. They're here to meet Terence Lahini, who escaped to the Yorkshire Dales 12 years ago. He juggles his full-time job as a teacher with running a successful small holding, where he rears all creatures, great and small. <coughs> Phil and Paula love the idea of raising rare breed pigs, so Terence takes them to look at his Gloucester Old Spot sow and piglets. It all looks picture perfect, but being self-sufficient means facing up to the realities of raising animals for meat. How did you feel about um, your first pigs going to slaughter? Well, I think if you don't feel anything, you shouldn't be doing it. So I think you've got to look after your animal, treat it, treat it your best. There's nothing wrong with loving it, and then you, you, you take it to slaughter. How do you fit it all in in a day, working yeah. full-time and, and doing this? You, you've got to have an early start and to let finish, you finish when everything's done. Mm. But it's a good way to de-stress. Definitely some food for thought there. But before Phil and Paula can bring home the bacon, they need to find some land to rear them. Let's hope our house search will serve up their perfect property. It's mystery house time. Now, up until now, Phil and Paula seem to have been very hung up on the idea of a kennel business. So why don't we show them something which might just test Phil's culinary skills instead? So finally, the mystery property. Mm -hmm. I know everything's a little bit mysterious for you, but this is designed to really make you think outside the box a little bit. OK. Are right. you nervous? Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh. I think I just really don't know what to expect. And how much work are you willing to do? Uh, if it feels right... Good question, Paula. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting, getting to think that I'm doing, going to be doing a lot of it. Um, I, I don't think that bothers us, actually. Well, let's see if they're game for some entrepreneurial thinking. Our mystery property is tucked away on the edge of the Yorkshire Dales, near the village of Gales. It's a pretty village made up of the characteristic stone cottages, and the surrounding countryside would offer Paula and Philip some of the best walking territory in North Yorkshire. Our mystery house is in a secluded spot outside of Gales, with an entirely different business proposition for our couple. Wow, this is just something else, isn't it? It's a stunning house, but of course it's more than that. We thought, for our mystery house, we would show you an alternative way of living. How about a B&B? &B? This is something that would keep you very busy. Yeah. Cooking up some wonderful meals. We were only just talking about that this morning, funnily enough. Ah. You actually wrote it down, didn't you? Yeah. Oddly. Could be an omen. <clears throat> well, what do you think of the property from the outside? Yeah, it looks... Absolutely it looks... beautiful looking. Oh. It's a barn conversion. Yeah. Made from local limestone. Mm. Fits in, really, doesn't it? It mm. does. It's in the character of the landscape. Yeah. Let's go and have a look inside. Yeah. Well, they seem ready to toy with the B&B &B idea as a way to earn a living. Hopefully they'll be convinced when they see the inside. This is it. Wow. Blimey. It's a great space, isn't it? It is. For it's staggering. cooking and entertaining. It is. This house is going to be up to you how you arrange it and how you use it. But it's okay. set up as a B&B. &B. I can't wait to see the rest of it now. Yeah. It's a good start, isn't it? It is. Brilliant. <laughs> Shall we keep moving? Yeah. While they seem smitten by the kitchen, down the far end of the hallway is where we find the other living areas. So this is the, the dining room? Well, yes, potentially. The way this works at the moment, the current owners have set it all up to be a B&B. &B. Right. They've just got four-star rating. They've got bookings, but they haven't actually taken in any customers yet. Money-wise, they estimate making about forty-five pounds to £50,000 a year. So it's not... Uh, a small business necessarily. No. Mm. Quite a lot to consider. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Should we just have a look at this room over yeah, here and then we'll yeah. check out where you'll put your guests? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I can see this house is winning them over, so through to the sitting room. Oh, this is super. Oh. That's gorgeous, just isn't it? Big feature fireplace. Mm. It's done very well. I think mm. it'll be very easy for you to kind of move in, slot in your own furnishings. Mm. Yeah. Oh, easily, yeah. actually. 
Yeah. So let's check out the guest accommodation. Okay. Mm. They seem to see the B&B business potential, so let's find out why it's got a four-star rating. So oh this property God. has five bedrooms, four of which are big doubles with ensuite. You've got two out here. Let's take a look at one of them. Crikey. <laughs> Crikey is your word, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh these are fantastic. And this is an example of what they all look like, pretty much. They're all like They're this. all like this. I can't believe it's out of this world, actually. They are beautiful. Superb, isn't it? Mm. Good space. Mm. Wonderful if you were coming to stay. Oh, yeah. you wouldn't want to go home, would you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> the other two guest rooms on this floor are similar in style. One, an equally high-spec double with ensuite and a bright modern single room. Upstairs, there's the fourth comfortable guest room with ensuite and what would be their bedroom. Here is what could be your master. With a big bathroom there. Oh, this is and all beautiful. of this space. It's beautiful. It is pretty beautiful. Really nice. And there's a door. Yes, so there's a door going straight outside. So if you were coming in and you wanted to not see a guest, you could come straight up to your own room. How do you feel about this house in general, now you've seen around it? We are sort of coming to a career change <laughs> from boarding kennels to um, looking after people, basically. Yeah. But it just feels... does feel good. Mm. And the only consideration, possibly, is the land. Mm. Let's <laughs> no, go. No, no. <laughs> you know what's silly. coming next. Yeah. Let's go have a look. Okay, <laughs> Come on. I think they're giving the house and B&B business some serious thought but it's the land that will swing it, especially for Paula. So, fingers crossed. Oh, it's gorgeous out here. Mmm. This courtyard, I think, is fantastic. Yeah, it's it nice. is lovely, actually. Very nice. Your guests, should you choose to have any, <laughs> would get the benefit of this. Yeah. And all of that. Mmm. That is stunning. It is gorgeous. It is stunning. Lovely. So, you've got the courtyard. Yeah. And you've also got just over an acre. Okay. An acre and a third of land. OK. And it all comes at a price. Now, I'm going to start with you. Give me a number. It's over our budget. 580. OK. Paula? Uh, I'm going to say six... Go for it. 20. 620. Ooh. How much would that upset you? 620? Mm. A lot. Oh. It well, if it's any consolation, it's on the market. You're right, it is over your budget at £575,000. So, it's not Blimey. as bad as you thought. Blimey. It's not hugely. No. But if there's a workable business here, then even at that price, this could be a possibility. You know, if there is that income, it will allow us to increase our mortgage anyway. Maybe um, when people come to a place like this, I mean, it's such a beautiful area. You want to go for walks with your dogs. You don't want them in kennels miles away from uh, where you are. Um, that maybe we could do a small kennels where people with dogs could come, leave their dogs in the kennels there so they're not actually staying in their rooms. So, you know, maybe we can fit the kennels in, in that line. A B and b for dog lovers. Yep. I love this about the mystery house. <laughs> it's just opened up a whole new <laughs> train of thought for you, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. So go have a meander around, decide how much you're going to charge your guests. Okay. <laughs> Let me know later. All right. Take care. Fantastic. This is what I love about the mystery house. They've looked around a completely new idea and opened their mind to a new possibility. But is it the property for them? At £575,000, the mystery house is over budget, but with the B&B business ready to go, it could be within their grasp. It has a spacious, well-designed kitchen, a large sitting room with character features, a master with a further four bedrooms for B&B guests, and one and a third acres of land, perfect for Paula's kennels. We can do with less land if we're not going to do the kennels on such a large scale, because yeah. there's enough there for the livestock. Yeah. And there's a, an a potentially an established business yeah, already yeah, that's bringing yeah. in the income. I mean, this this is just such a lovely room. It's lovely, I isn't mean, it? They've really done them nicely for, you know, you'd, it'd be a lovely place to come and stay if you're mm. looking for a B&B &B in the country, wouldn't it? One reservation for me is how we could divide the property from separate from our living quarters to uh, the B&B &B guests, really. So, um, but I think we would be really quite interested. The kitchen is 
out of this world. Uh, there is enough land uh, to keep livestock. We've still got the kennel option, so it just ticks all the other boxes. Hello. Oh, it's so peaceful <laughs> out here. Mm. could sit here forever, but we haven't got the time to do that. You need to find somewhere where you can sit down mm. and mull all of this over. OK. So our tour is at an end, and I think it's given our house hunters plenty to think about. Paula and Phil have both long held dreams of moving to the countryside and they've finally reached that point in their lives when they can actually make it a reality. But what do they want? I mean, is it a cosy country cottage or do they want to run a kennel business or self-sufficiency or even run a B&B? &B? And have we helped them at all to move closer to that dream? Well, it's time to find out. But I've got to say, after this roller coaster journey of a property search, I am none the wiser as to which way you're going to go. So let's just take a moment to go through all the properties. Mm -hmm. Now, we started with the Weavers Cottages, two into one, uh, down in Garfi. What were mm. your thoughts on that? You and were particularly wowed by the kitchen. Uh, I mean, the kitchen, oh, the kitchen was just fabulous. Uh, There's no doubt about that. I could see myself in there immediately but not just in the kitchen, as soon as I walked in the door, it just felt right. I just think it would be perfect for us all by that one factor of it was too near houses for dog kennels. I would go and buy it tomorrow if I could do that, yeah. The big if. Well, let's talk about the next property. The barn conversion. Now, we saw that in Leyburn. That, I think, would, could work very well for us. Let's face it, it had the land, the views, it had the carcass almost for the kitchen, which, yeah, I, I'd love to stamp the mark on it and say, yeah, this is what we've done. Um, and it come in way below budget. Uh, the opportunities for the kennels, uh, which is obviously something that we'd have to do first. Um, yeah, it, um, it ticked all the right boxes. Well, let's now talk about the mystery house. Mm. Well, we'd been going very clearly down this track of looking for a place to run kennels. And suddenly, there was the option of a B&B. &B. A complete career change. <laughs> <laughs> that was very, very um, oh, surprising, wasn't it? The property was, I mean, it was phenomenal, wasn't it? It was breathtaking. The fact that they have gone that far down the route of, you know, the four-star rating for a B&B, &B, um, and they've already got bookings, is encouraging. Well, the word that I hear is options. Mm. You have so many, and not mm. just with that mystery house. Have you come to any decisions? Well, the two options are the barn conversion or the B&B. Right. So we've shown you two properties that you are seriously interested mm -hmm. in. Hopefully this journey has been another step. It has. Oh, most definitely. Significant. It has Absolutely. been so informative and helpful, and, as I say, it has really, you know, stamped it onto us that we are going to do it. Mm. Great. Well, I hope to see you do it very soon. Best of luck. Let us know how you get on. Will do. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks. I think that Phil and Paula have got a lot of courage. They're moving home, they're moving county, and they're setting up a whole new lifestyle together. We may not have found them their ideal business, whether it's the B&B &B or dogs or otherwise, but I do think at the end of this journey, they're a step closer to realising their dream of escaping to the country. I'll see you next time.